If there's one thing that can make a reality or action-based TV show more entertaining, it's people getting hurt, both physically and emotionally, of course. Something every single Total Drama contestant has experienced to some kind of degree. We got ugly breakups, people getting eliminated unfairly, and guys literally falling into molten lava and somehow not dying on the spot. And then again, it's a cartoon, so moments like that shouldn't be taken too seriously. The point is, these young adults have been through way more hardships during this show than the average person. So I wanted to take this video to go over which characters suffered the most in each Total Drama season from the original island all the way to the second season of the reboot. I'm going to be taking into account both the physical and emotional pain the characters endured throughout each season to best determine who went through the most, while probably throwing in some honorable mentions here and there, unless one character completely blows the competition away in certain aspects. Also, since the second season of the reboot still hasn't officially aired in the US, there will be some spoilers for that one, so proceed with caution if you don't want to get spoiled on those contents later in the video. Island is one of the tougher seasons to figure out, in my opinion, because it felt like a good chunk of the cast was getting treated equally when it came to overall pain, probably because this season was the most grounded in reality. Obviously, it still had very cartoony moments, but the vibe of the seasons definitely got more cartoony from world tour onward, especially when it came to physical pain. That being said, Heather did get it pretty bad this season. While a lot of what happened to her felt like karma due to the way she played the game, she still got hurt more than any other female contestant that season, if I'm not mistaken. Getting shot by a trank dart, ants dumped in her bed, thrown off a cliff, her chest was flashed on national TV, had her head shaved only for her to get kicked off in the final three anyway, it's pretty bad. But at the same time, characters like Trent and Cody suffered incredibly severe injuries during their stay, like Trent falling hundreds of feet into sand or eating a poisonous blowfish, while Cody got attacked by a bear, resulting in him leaving the competition in a full body cast and wheelchair. It's just their injuries were not as frequent per episode as Heather's. Gwen got it the worst when it came to emotional suffering, I think. She was being tortured by Heather constantly during the first season, from the reading diary on the TV thing, to kissing Trent just as Gwen and Trent were starting to become a thing, only for Trent to get eliminated in the same episode after the truth of Heather's intentions came to light. That girl was stressed more than anyone else, and it didn't really start to ease up more until around the time Jeff got eliminated. Total drama action slimmed down the pickings quite a bit, with the cast almost being cut in half, leaving more room for the ones that still were allowed to compete to suffer more often than normal, since not every challenge would result in an elimination. I feel like it's almost a three-way tie on who got hurt physically the most between Owen, Harold, and Justin. Owen's usually one of the characters who gets hurt more than others since he's comedic relief, but one challenge in particular injured him so badly that he had to have his jaw wired shut for the following episode, in turn forcing him into a liquid diet until his jaw healed. Justin got hit occasionally during the first half of the season, then completely destroyed in his elimination episode because Courtney pushed him off a tower. It wasn't as bad as Cody's situation in Island, but Justin still had a broken arm and what looked like a broken neck. Then Harold just getting slapped around by Duncan both physically and mentally the entire time he was in the game, not being taken seriously seriously during challenges, as well as having trust issues with Lashana at times too, which all lasted quite a while since Harold wasn't even booted until the final five. If a fourth character were to be thrown in here, I'd have to say Duncan, because the moment Courtney came back, which was before the teams even merged, dealing with her was kind of destroying him in a lot of ways. Not only would she physically abuse him, but she'd also manipulate him emotionally to get further in the game. Duncan's not the most compassionate guy out there, but I think we can all agree Courtney is way more unhinged than he is, even after what he pulled in All-Stars. Also, DJ and his mom were homeless for a period of time after action ended so that's... World Tour almost feels a lot easier to pick just due to the way that season played out. Ezekiel, without question, went through the most physical and mental suffering out of any returning player, albeit he did make the conscious decision to stay hidden on the plane rather than simply accepting his elimination after the first challenge. Even still, he got thrown off a plane without a working parachute in the London challenge, continued to lose his sanity to the point where he was barely even human anymore, fell into a volcano, then went on back to Camp Wawanakwa to live in a cave filled to the brim with toxic waste. This show absolutely absolutely destroyed this kid. Honorable mentions have to go to Cody and Alejandro, to be honest. Cody was the most consistent punching bag this season, despite his worst injuries not being as intense as Zeke's volcano incident. In almost every single challenge, he was dealing with Sierra's completely overbearing nature. It was so bad that he could barely even sleep in between challenges, even if his team was in the first class cabin. While Sierra did help him get further in challenges, Cody would still suffer physically along the way. Heather winning was obviously incredible, but if Cody ended up winning, it would have been totally fine with me after all the BS he dealt with that season, he would have earned it. Although Alejandro went mostly unscathed in World Tour, the way he went out was so bad that I gotta mention him. Like Ezekiel, Alejandro too was engulfed in lava after being trampled by all the other Total Drama contestants first. The severity of his injuries resulted in Kristen Chef putting him inside a robot suit to quote-unquote heal, where Al would spend his time for the next year of his life, not being freed until the start of Total Drama All-Stars. When it comes to the Revenge of the Island season, it didn't really feel like one single contestant went through a whole lot of combined physical 
and mental suffering. It was more so a character would get it bad in one category or the other. So the two I'm giving the physical suffering trophy to are Scott and Sam. While Sam didn't last very long in the competition, that guy was getting his ass whooped in basically every single challenge until he got kicked. Scott was getting hurt every now and then too, but it didn't reach its worst point until his elimination episode, where he went from getting put in a full body cast, shot out of a catapult while being attacked by a shark, and returning in the finale inside a motorized wheelchair, completely incapable of speech at the time. Fun fact, this specific chair is based off the one Christopher Pike from Star Trek rides around in, which was also referenced in the preschool episode of South Park where the main boy's preschool teacher rode around in present day. Mike and Zoe are about equal when it comes to emotional suffering this season. Mike genuinely wanted to date Zoe but had no control over his mind or body due to his DID condition, resulting in a complete mental breakdown in his elimination episode. He was able to overcome this problem, which is great, yet it didn't change the fact that he was struggling to keep himself in control while being too afraid to tell the girl he liked the truth. Also got blackmailed by Scott after Scott found out about everything, which obviously made matters worse. While the portrayal of his condition as a whole may not have been the best in the world, and I'm sure the crew would agree it didn't age super well, you can't help but still feel bad for the guy because of everything he went through. Scott, you... No, no keys in there. Zoe was on the receiving end of all these situations, so being left completely in the dark with the truth, having to see the guy she liked kiss another girl on several occasions. Then when the two of them finally let all the skeletons out of the closet, Mike got voted off, leaving Zoe with a bit of a broken spirit, eventually losing her shit completely, going commando mode for two episodes. This personality she got compared to her old one was like night and day. She was so much more intense, it was almost like she turned into Joe. Uh, luckily, in her elimination episode, she realized her friendship with Cam was more important than taking the game too seriously, so she mellowed out again. As for Total Drama All-Stars, Cameron easily suffered the most physically this season with the severity of his injuries from the saving Chris from Ezekiel challenge. Tons of boulders fell on him, which landed him in a full body cast and wheelchair like Cody before him. Even when Cam returned in the All-Stars finale to help Zoe throughout the challenges, he was in his bubble for a bit and it still had his left arm broken in a cast. Cam had his fair share of mental struggles this season too, becoming Sierra's new fixation as her unhealthy way of coping due to not having the real Cody around, as well as having lots of trouble trusting Mike due to Mal being the one in control and acting suspicious almost all the time. Time, yet Cam was not able to figure out the truth on his own, only learning it when Mal revealed himself during Cam's elimination. <laughs> And to bring up Mike and Mal again, I'd argue the mental struggles he went through this season were worse than Revenge. While the dynamic he and Zoe had was still very similar to what it was in Revenge because it was Zoe being left in the dark again about what's really going on with Mike, Mike was completely unable to control himself due to how overpowering Mal was as an identity. Knowing what Mal was doing on the outside this whole time and having to deal with the fact there's nothing he can do until reaching that power inside his head or whatever. There was even a point where Mal tried to gaslight Mike into thinking he wasn't even the original identity from the start. Zoe did didn't get it nearly as bad this season in my opinion though since she was under the impression Mal was Mike for a while, so it was a lot of gleeful ignorance as opposed to anger and depression like last season. On to Pocketoo Island, it feels safe to say Dave got it the worst out of anybody. Some may think he deserved it, and I mean, maybe. <laughs> in all seriousness though, the disdain for Dave is mostly just for the memes. Despite his annoying attitude at times, he did suffer quite a bit this season. Everything that went on between he and Sky for starters, she was low-key leading him on, but at the same time, when she finally rejected him, he had a complete mental breakdown, not even wanting to be on the show anymore if he couldn't be with Sky. He got hurt physically along the way too, mostly with gross out related challenges like having snot shot at him or getting covered in literal crap. Then there was his second breakdown in the finale after finding out Sky had a boyfriend back home. And that guy was so gone, he had intent to kill both her and Sean if it meant he could win the million dollars. His hair got burned off too, so that added more salt to the wounds, I'm sure. Honorable mentions, I guess, Sean and Jasmine? The two of them had a bit of, you know, relationship troubles along the way, mainly due to Sean's obsession with the zombie apocalypse, each of them dealt with their fair share of physical pain along the way too. Redonkulous Race felt like it had more physical injuries and full-on mental breakdowns than any other season to date, so picking a character or a pair of characters to take the gold in these categories was a bit tough, but after some thinking, I feel like Devin suffered the worst overall out of any contestant this season. The first few episodes had Devin portrayed as a very high-spirited yet oblivious individual who was just happy to be partaking in the competition with someone he loved like a sister, on top of having a great girlfriend waiting for him back home. However, once the prison challenge in Australia took place, Devin's girlfriend would end up breaking up with him over the phone while the episode was still airing, leading to him going through the seven stages of grief over the course of six episodes. Devin got a little bit of breathing room after that, even realizing his true feelings for Carrie and allowing the two of them to become officially boyfriend and girlfriend. That happiness only lasted so long, though, as Kitty of the sister team would accidentally knock Devin off the edge of a cliff, forcing him to leave the competition just like Cameron at All-Stars. By the time the finale happened this season, Devin was almost fully healed outside of sporting some extra bandages atop his head. 
As for an honorable mention, I almost want to give it to Noah or Ryan. Noah went through a similar situation to Devin, where the girl he liked said she couldn't date him right now, resulting in Noah entering an almost vegetative state for about an entire episode or so, while Ryan was getting constantly physically and emotionally abused by his on-again, off-again girlfriend Stephanie. I genuinely impressed how that guy managed to stay relatively level-headed throughout his run, despite everything he went through. The Total Drama Island reboot definitely returned to the series' early roots in many ways, one of which being the characters and interactions actions between said characters felt a lot more grounded in reality. So while there was some suffering going on, it wasn't on the same level of severity as some of the other seasons. With that said, it feels like Emma got it pretty bad in both the mental and physical suffering departments. She might have gotten hurt more than any other female contestant for this season, like when she tumbled down a large hill after being sprayed by a fire hose and being attacked by a horde of raccoons in her elimination episode. As for the mental suffering, she wanted to do total drama to escape from dealing with her ex-boyfriend Chase, so when it turned out that he'd be competing too, her anger issues would shine through a lot whenever he was around, making it harder for her to focus on the game at times. Even after Chase was eliminated and things kind of got better between them, she would still bring him up to Bowie because she wanted Bowie's approval if they were to get back together. As for honorable mentions, the Hockey Bros and Millie for sure. Hockey Bros fell into the category of getting eliminated off injury after fighting a cassowary then falling off a cliff, while Millie, at least at the end of the season, had to deal with the pain of losing her best friend Priya after a web of lies came to light. Finally, for the reboot second season, same cast of characters with a whole different side of the suffering wheel. Damien got it pretty bad this time around. A lot of the folks who watched the first season were betting on this guy to win when the second season was initially announced. He did at least make it to the merge this time, but got his immunity idol taken off screen and stung by an entire bee colony in his elimination episode, giving a whole new meaning to the phrase, that's gotta sting. I'm gonna give MK an honorable mention here, specifically for the physical suffering category, because she had to deal with a bear beating her ass for an entire episode because Chris caught her cheating. And getting punished for cheating is one thing, but this was a bit extreme. Then again, this is Chris we're talking about, so, nah. Part of me wanted to put Priya in the honorable mentions for emotional suffering because of everything that happened with she and Caleb, but I remembered she literally won last season and still has that money waiting for her. And money doesn't automatically buy happiness. Even still, life can't be that bad for her at the end of the day. If I had to pick one character that suffered the most across the course of the entire series, it would be this intern. He, he's, he's just dead. Kind of hard to top that. And that'll do it. I'm pretty confident in the characters I chose for this video. However, if there's any characters I didn't mention in this video that you believe should have been brought up, please let me know in the comments down below. Huge thanks to my gold tier patrons, BFP4, Izzy Torium, Draconis, and London Morse. You guys' support really means the world to me. And if you enjoyed this video, don't be a stranger to leaving a like down below and subscribing for more content like this in the future. But for now, I will see you guys next time. Peace out, take care, bye-bye.